amazing. I will definitely do that. Welcome everyone to our crossroads to, of NLP. I am excited and honored to be here with you. I am going to, uh, I did start the recording and share my screen with you as well. My name is Brigitte Hoefele. I am the CEO and Grandmaster of the NLP Center of Atlanta. And I am a uh, born German. I was uh, raised and born and raised in um, the Swabian part of Germany, beautiful area. Couldn't wait to get the heck out of there. Although we are known for some great wine and some great cars. I come from um, the beautiful, outside of the beautiful city of Stuttgart where we're known for many things, but we're really known for Porsche. That's all that matters to me. Um, I came to the United States with a little toddler in one hand and my husband in the other, and we kind of hooked under as a team and to start a Montessori school. We did not come with a company, although I uh, was uh, very successful in corporate Germany in marketing and uh, came to the United States to start a Montessori school. I'm out of the day-to-day -day operations of the school and I love, love, love methodologies and education. And that's why I'm also not just teaching children and parents, but also adults with, an, with the methodology of neurolinguistic programming. And I um, am very, very honored and excited to be here with you as the CEO of the NLP Institute of Atlanta. And I am here with another grandmaster in NLP and of NLP, and that is our wonderful faculty member and CEO of his own company, Mr. John Kurth. John, welcome. Thanks, Brigida. Again, i have a master of neuro-linguistic programming. I have a different lineage. Uh, I have my own business in tactic sales scripting, and Brigida and I partnered up a couple years ago. We were at a international sales convention. Brigida was the guest speaker, and I was in the audience. I was also going to, uh, Brigida was the MC. I was a guest presenter on day two of the event, and I could tell immediately through Brigida's language patterns that she also was a grandmaster of neuro-linguistic programming because it's written all over the language. I heard it. I was a guest expert. I had taught the CEO to help her with her scripting and her NLP from selling from stage. So Brigitte and I met there and thought, hey, there's a lot of synergies there. So one thing led to another, and then Brigitte invited me to be a faculty member at the NLP Center of Atlanta, and we've taught the Crossroads of NLP Workshop live last October, and we're going to be telling you about conducting it uh, virtually this year. As an aside, I'm also the author of What Are Your Words Wearing? How to Make Your Sales Communication More Comprehensive, Substantial, and Precise. Brigitte, back over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. I'm, I'm very, very uh, happy that John is here with us. Um, and as I said before, please have something to write with and something to write on as we are going to give you great knowledge and information and step by steps. And we're also going to do an exercise together so you can start implementing immediately what you're learning here. So you are here to set yourself apart from the noise in the business world because it's noisy out there. Specifically during the pandemic, everyone and their, and their uncle is on Zoom and is doing something live online. And it's just gotten a lot, lot more noisy and a lot more crowded. In the coaching world, and we have some coaches that are here with us today, me being a coach, uh, John being a coach as well. In the coaching world, you must learn to set yourself apart from all the others. You must learn and continue to grow. That's what it, it's all about. Because if you teach others that they are in, um, in their business to learn and grow and are consistent learners and growers, and you're not doing it yourself, you're not congruent. You're out of, you're, you're incongruent, you're out of alignment. So you are, as you are here, investing in time in your growth and you're continuing to invest in your growth. Congratulations on that. I wonder what you think what each and every coach has in common. I say here a good coach changes the game, an exceptional coach changes the game and changes lives. As you are in business, 
you are in somewhat a coach. You're either coaching your team, you're coaching your uh, staff, you're coaching the people that you get in contact with, you're coaching uh, your clients, if you want it or not, you're probably doing some sort of that. And it is up to you to continue to grow to become an even better business owner, team leader, manager, coach. And I'm asking you, what does every Olympic athlete have in common? What do you think? You put it in the chat box. And I pretty much already gave you the answer. Exactly, they all have a coach, right? Every Olympic athlete, each and every one that's standing there, they're investing in themselves. They're, they're, they have incredible tenacity and drive. And even when they feel like throwing in the towel, there's someone at the sidelines that say, get that towel, get back in, go do it again, and go do it even better than last time. There's always someone on the sidelines. There's always someone in the midst of it that that sees a bigger picture for you, that sees the greatness of you when you don't see it or even feel the greatness within yourself or hear the greatness. So um, one person can only take themselves to a certain point, right? I go to the gym and I think I'm gonna give my very best. And then I have my personal trainer there and he goes, Brigitte, you can do better, do one more and do an extra one and go deeper and go further. So there's always someone that has the best of your interest um, in mind for you. And that is fast tracking your way to success by having a coach. So here's some key questions. How could you and your, and your business improve with a coach if you don't have a coach yet? What if your business is to coach others and you probably are already doing that? And what if your career is being a coach? Coach is all about the straight talk, and that's what we're doing here. We're not going to give you some sort of fluff. It's about the straight talk to get you to your results, to your well-formed outcome. Coaches ask the tough questions. They don't sugarcoat it. They ask the tough questions so their clients and you can learn and grow as you are investing in your, in your growth and in your continuous learning. So here's some straight talk. You ready for this? If you're a coach and you're not being coached, you're incongruent in your practice. Remember, it's all about alignment and congruency. If you're claiming to be a quality coach and you're not being coached, you're incongruent as well. So ask yourself these questions. Are you in alignment? Because the universe does not, the universe rewards one thing and one thing only. And that those are the people that are in action and are in alignment with what they say and what they do right? Start where you are, use what you can, do what you can. And as we are in the crossroads of NLP, you choosing your path, do that now. And because you're at a crossroads in your business, your coaching practice, in your life, you have two choices. You have the first choice, the path that leads to stagnation, just getting by with what you learned years ago, Maybe it was many, many years ago for some of us. Stagnation is just getting the okay results, kind of the, you know, being complacent. And it also leads to having and leading a media, mediocre life. Or you have the second choice that is the challenging path that leads to growth and achievement and mastery. So it's really take your time right now and it's, it's time for you now to make your choice. Today we're sharing some powerful strategies from our crossroads of NLP, choosing your, choosing your path program that you can use now. As I said earlier, this isn't cotton candy. This isn't any training that is just a, hot of, a lot of hot air or fluff. This training is all meat on the bone and you're getting not one, but two two grandmasters of NLP hands-on in this program and in any ongoing NLP Atlanta course from here on forward. Now, let's talk about the law of reciprocity, John. All right, thank you. So we're talking about the law of reciprocity. So uh, uh, go to the next slide, please, Brigida. So the law of reciprocity has been called quid pro quo. Quid pro quo comes from Latin, which essentially means 
if I'll, I'll scratch your back, if you'll scratch mine. Now, the law of reciprocity is so powerful because it's part of our evolutionary psychology. It is hardwired into our human brain. That's why it's called a law of reciprocity. So if you do something nice for me, I feel obligated to do something nice for you back. Notice it's feeling obligated, not thinking obligated. So I feel obligated to do something nice to you in return. Anthropologists have seen the law of reciprocity in many forms throughout all world cultures. That's why it's a law and we can use it expertly for influence. Next slide. See, what a, to really optimize the law of reciprocity, the gift has to have three things. It has to be experienced as being meaningful. It has to be unexpected and customized. Note the gift has to be experienced. It is an experience. It could be a small experience, but people remember small experiences and big experiences. Why? More positive emotional states. They feel it. So it has to be meaningful, unexpected, and customized. Now note, it has to be experienced as meaningful and customized and relevant from the receiver's perspective, not your perspective, their perspective. Perception is reality. So from meaningfulness, now let's go to the next slide. It needs to be a pleasant surprise from their perspective. It needs to be unexpected. Now, what is a pleasant surprise? We're all about deconstructing things in NLP. A pleasant states of delight, excitement, curiosity, happiness. They're all mixed together. It's really creating in their brain a cocktail of feel-good chemicals. We're eliciting various emotional positive states here that are all linked together. So I wanna get very clear on this. We know about NLP is about eliciting states and using states. This is why gifts that are meaningful and a pleasant surprise work. Next slide, please. So let's talk about customization and advanced customization. a favor or gift is received, it needs to be customized to their needs, preferences, or circumstances of the recipient. If the gift is customized to their needs or preferences, we call it a thoughtful gift. Thoughtful, full of thought. So if it's customized to their needs or preference, it's considered a thoughtful gift. If it's customized to their current circumstances, it's a timely gift. So today you give somebody a gift of hand sanitizer, maybe a mask, I don't know where you are, but those would be considered timely gifts. Hey, it's a bottle of sanitizer, it's timely. You will feel good about it. So let me share a story about a timely gift in a way. Years ago, I was, uh, working with a former partner, and we did a, tr uh, a trade show in downtown San Diego. It was called San Diego Entrepreneurial Day. And they blocked off several city blocks downtown near where the San Diego Padres play baseball. It's right near the bay. It's beautiful, but it's windy. We had to walk or wheel in all our stuff for the trade show. I brought in a roll of duct tape, standard on every NASA space mission. But because things were blowing around, I brought out the roll of duct tape and we were able to tape everything down. The person's response was, oh, how wonderful, duct tape. Again, duct tape, but it was a timely, in effect, a timely gift. So you're eliciting these types of states from people. So when you give them a gift or a favor, it starts them on a process from potentially a stuck state to an empowered state, or from being neutral to you, to being in your corner, to being your advocate. 
Gifts can do this. That's why we're talking about customization and advanced customization. Remember, neuro-linguistic programming, words, behaviors. These are all about customizing it. So once you customize it, very, very powerful. Go to the next slide, please, Brigitte. So how much is enough? How much is enough regarding gifts and favors? The most effective strategy is to build over time. Meaningfulness, unexpectedness, and customization are more important than the dollar amount or the size of the favor. Now there's something that is also related to the law of reciprocity. It's called the emotional bank account, or in this case, a favor bank account. You know how many deposits you've put in and how many deposits you've, you know, are you taking a withdrawal? Part of the law of reciprocity, we know that. We have an ongoing calculus of what's in our favor bank account. So people just know that. So remember, this is how we're hardwired. It's hardwired into our brain. So here's an example of someone with the favor bank account. There's a person I worked with for years. She had what was called the Beverly Hills Mastermind. She got together some of the most amazing people once a month, and I drove for two hours from where I live to there to be there. This is all post pre-pandemic. Well, she had a client that was doing what's called an investor roadshow in which for his company, he's having to sell shares in his business to potential investors. So when this woman called me up, she said this, John, I'm calling in a favor. Not John, I'm asking you for a favor. John, I'm calling in a favor. She was very explicit with her language. I said, yes, because I knew up until that point how much she had built in over time in her favor bank account with me. She called one in, but she was explicit, not would you do me a favor? I'm calling in a favor. I'm highly skilled in NLP, still works because it's hardwired into our human brain. Next slide, please. So here's a powerful script. Will you do me a favor? Will you do me a favor? Now this script taps powerfully into the law of reciprocity. You don't have to have any money or any deposits in the favor bank account for this script to work. Will you do me a favor? It works on complete strangers. Why? Even if the person does not have any money in the favor bank account with a stranger, the other person may grant them the favor because it gives them a leverage either now or in the future, they can call it in. Will you do me a favor works. Now there's something in Chinese cultures called guanxi. Guanxi means relationships and connections. Guanxi in Chinese culture and societies is very important. Why? Historically in mainland China and other areas, roughly 80 to 100 years, there's a society-wide cataclysm. Wars, famine, natural disasters. It's your relationships and connections that can get your family out. That's why it is such a cornerstone in those types of societies. But again, we're all talking about how you can use the law of reciprocity expertly. And we're all about hands-on. So we're gonna give you an exercise. So let's go to the next slide, please. So here's the exercise again. Practice makes the master. We're giving you an experience to actually practice this. So for a key client or a potential key client, I want you to think of a gift and write it down meaningful. How will it be meaningful to that client? Unexpected. It's random from their end, but it's planned from your end. So think of a gift that's how it will be meaningful to them. Yeah, it's unexpected because they're not expecting it, but you're planning it and are going to give it to them. And three, customize it. How can I customize that gift to them? Now, it could be to their favorite color. It could be for their favorite sports team. It could be monogrammed. We want you to think about what you know about that potential client. What are their values? And how can you customize it to them? So we're going to spend five minutes here, and we've got exercise music, not one, two, three, that type of exercise music. 
but exercise music for you to write down for a potential client that you would value, how would it be meaningful to them? Just write it down. And how can I customize the gift to them? So we're gonna have five minutes of exercise music. Use your pen and paper because you've got these things and begin.
time to come to an end. Five minutes are over. Thank you so much. Now, oops. I am curious what you came up with. So I'd like for one or two people to come out. And if you're not coming out, I already know who I'm going to call on first. Uh, I want to give you a quick chance to come on out yourself. Who has anything great to share? Cindy, I'm pretty sure that you came up with some incredible ideas. What'd you come up with? Cindy, unmute yourself, please. All right. Um, well, oh, hold on. You're still am muted. Am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Oh, Cindy, we can't hear you for some reason. Maybe. Uh, oh, here we go. I had my um, volume down. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So um, my idea was a personalized uh, thank you note and, um, you know, specifically for one of my clients and I, you know, handwritten and sent to her, you know, with perhaps something inside of it, something special just for her. Mm -hmm. So what would that something special be? Um, I know she likes to work in her garden a lot. Okay. So uh, perhaps some wildflower seeds or, or forget-me-nots. All right. See, yes, and this is how you build on it. Remember, NLP is also about a utilization strategy. So if you send her a seed packet for uh, forget-me-nots, you can tie that in. So... Dear handwritten, you know, I know you're an avid gardener and here are some forget me nots. So please forget me not as your coach or as your, um, again, it's kind of corny, but who cares? It's a <laughs> utilization strategy. And then we could further, every time you see the beautiful forget me nots, just enjoy and think about how much your life has been blooming since we started working together. Uh, yeah, you can tie it all in? Yeah. Gita, your you feedback take, on that as well. Yeah, you take the analogy to a whole nother level. Now, you could, and Cindy, you, you, you might be already doing this. You know the values of your client. As yeah. a good coach, you know what your client values. And if you don't know what your client values, then definitely, you know, use these cards. And if you don't know what these cards are, then, you know, we'll have a different conversation offline. This is not what this course is about. But know what the value code of your, of your client is so you can actually customize it. Know perhaps even what the representational system of your client is. And if you don't know what the rep system are of your client, there are another set of cards and we can have this conversation online, uh, offline or take a practitioner course. So know what the value code is, the, the coded language and, and how they um, also store information and how your client um, takes in information and what what is it that they really like and how do they do they see things more do they have more of a feeling for it do are they more of a uh, auditory person do they like to maybe you know send them a little itunes card uh, that they can have some sort of playlist or a subscription to spotify or are they more of a um ad and auditory digital person and they are really into books or really into techie things. So getting to your, getting to know your client to customize things like that is really, really special. And it leaves a, a specific and special impact. I actually got a, a card from Cindy um, last week and it's got little fairy dust inside of it. So when I opened it, the fairy dust came out and it made me absolutely, you know, warm and fuzzy and, and felt really good because something pretty tragic happened in my life and she took the time to send me a, a note in the mail. It goes a long way. Thank you so much for that, Cindy. One other thing I would like to note, Brigida is a fellow master of, grandmaster of NLP. She knows all about how that works and yet it still had the emotional resonance. Meaningful, unexpected, and customized. That's how it works. 
All right, Brigitte, who are we going to call on next? Um, I'm going to say Yasmin. Yasmin, come on out. Okay, I would say I was using one of those senses. So my potential client uh, uses their olfactory senses a lot. So mm -hmm. my gift to them would be a scented candle, like okay. lavender or something, because I know it's their favorite scent, and that's something that they would they like to meditate, for example, and that could help them. And of course, they'd probably think of me while they're meditating, whatever, but they could use that scented candle or just have it somewhere on a shelf and could smell it um, during the day or when they, you know, need to calm down at night or whatever. So, or it could bring them into a state. It could anchor them even. So. Yeah, it could be, it's definitely an olfactory anchor, right? And every time they light that candle, they think of you. That too. And some other <laughs> things on this, it's important that, you know, Yasmin, that lavender is their favorite scent. Right. Because the smell, because olfactories are so strong, you pick the wrong scent and you're going to have an aversion reaction. So if you know their olfactory, but not their favorite scent, then you could get them a gift certificate so they could choose to order their favorite scented candle. So that's right. why it has to be customized. When you're dealing with customization with olfactory is their primary rep system, it can either work extremely well or it blows up in your, literally in your face. But again, sure. even if it wasn't the right sent for them still it was thoughtful it was unexpected and it was considered meaningful so this is why you do this just a little bit of effort like this totally expands we talked about anchoring for people who aren't familiar with anchoring we cover that in the practitioner course very powerful anchoring smells are extremely but there is, you can do it with sounds. There's many other different things you can do with this. So just with this example right here, look how we can link it to their values, to their rep systems, to what their goals are. We can anchor them. That's why we want you to use gifts strategically. That's why we're talking about using the law of reciprocity expertly. Brigida. Yes, and one last thing to that, I have one of my clients who has a crest and I went all out and let that crest be one of those wax stamps and had that crest turn into a stamp. Loved it, loved it, uses it to, you know, send things out on via snail mail um, on their letters. So it, it leaves a lasting impression and absolutely, John, it is an incredible, incredible anchor. Now, um does anyone else do we have one for, for do we have time for one more share john yeah we do if, if please we have time for just one more again you've got access to two of us please take advantage of the opportunity so someone else raise your hand and speak who hasn't spoken already come on out don't be afraid who else wants to because these are some great ideas Okay, I guess no one, unfortunately. Well, this was a great time for you to come out and share uh, with us and, and get some uh, more feedback from two grandmasters. So let me move on. Um, as, we, as John already said, you have us here hands on and you're gonna continue to have us hands on as we move forward in the crossroads of NLP choosing your path. Because as John said earlier, this is only the beginning. We have just now started and we have had a NLP, uh, choosing your crossroads of NLP last year in October, where we came together in Atlanta in person. This year, it's not gonna happen that way, but that's actually good news too, because now we get to do it live online and we don't, people don't have to fly into Atlanta to come see us. You actually get to be with us over 10 days going through the crossroads of NLP. Now, what does that really mean? So I'm going to give you all of the topics that we're going to work through within those 10 days. Persuasion, part one, how audiences, let me move this, let me move your little thumbnails up really quick so I can see how audiences become receptive to a message before they experience it. So we have the agenda setting theory, 
how to control attention, focus, states, and thoughts. We're actually modeling this right now in a, in a narrowed down version in this course, as we're modeling many other things. Number two, are you a true lineage holder? Ask yourself if you have learned and, and are an NLP practitioner or master practitioner, are you a true lineage holder? The lineage and your credibility and marketability. Both of us, John and I, are, are clearly traced back to the founders of NLP. And it, it's, a, it's a very, it's a one removed. Persuasion part two, how audiences become receptive to a message before they experience it. We are going to show you how to use mysteries and open loops even more effectively. We're going to show you advanced techniques for using stories and metaphors. Oh, hold on. Ritual theory and ritual practice for business applications, constructing a ritual for your business tribe. You're part of our NLP tribe. You know a little bit about that. Going into peak state and the state of flow, getting into the zone, and we're defining flow and what that means, deconstructing flow and its nine core elements. And we're going to go into organizational alignment and organizational congruence that we talked a little bit earlier today, applying the neurological levels model to your business. And now then we're also going to go beyond the neurological level model. Influence Mastery Part 1, controlling what your prospects will remember in the hypernesia and controlling what your prospect will also forget, the hypnotic amnesia. Going into defense against the dark, dark arts with the cult and cult-like brands. Influence Mastery Part 2, post-hypnotic su suggestions and mass, mass post-hypnotic suggestions and explaining it. Boy, oh boy, was that already it? Wow, we have a lot to cover in those 10 days. So let me give you the entire times and days when we're going to do this together. John, John Kurth, Grandmaster of NLP and myself. So here it is, the Crossroads of NLP. It's going to start on Monday, October 19th, and it's gonna go through Friday the 23rd. So it's going to go Monday through Friday, and it'll be two hours every day, uh, 12 o'clock Pacific time to 2 o'clock Pacific time, or if you're on the East Coast, 3 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Eastern time, or if you're anywhere between, in between, so mountain time, it would be 1, 1 to 3, and uh, central time will be 2 to 4. So it's going to be Monday through Friday, October 23rd, October 19th through 23rd, and, not or, and Monday through Friday, October 22nd through the 30th. So we're going to leave you the weekend because we're also going to give you success work to do. And we're going to give you a little bit of breathing room to digest all the information that we're giving you because we're giving you a lot of meat on the bone. So it's Monday through Friday. Those are five days. And then again, Monday through Friday, those are another five days. So all together, it'll be 10 days, two hours each day as we are going through those steps. You will be receiving your workbook. You will be getting everything that you need for that course beforehand. Last year, our participants paid $4,997. Our alumni are going to join us again this year. They paid $4,997. They flew into Atlanta. John flew into Atlanta. We um, did all of that in person this year. We're going to um, safety first, and we're going to do it live online. You're going to get exactly the same what everyone else did, but now you're getting it for $2,991, and you have enough time to pay it in installments, so you, so you can do pay three paid installments of $997 between now and October 19th when we start. It must be paid in full by the time we start, but you have plenty of time to do that. So we're all about meat on the bones and we're gonna give you even more meat. We're gonna give you a bonus and that is a one hour breakthrough strategy session with myself and John. So it'll be the two of us together, which holy cow, just one of us would be worth it but now you're getting two uh, for one hour in a breakthrough, 
breakthrough strategy session with you and the two of us, John and Brigida. And then we're going to add another bonus, and that is each one of us one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes. So you get one-on-one -on -one with me for 30 minutes, and you get one-on-one -on -one with John for 30 minutes. And we're going to, we can go deeper into your strategy or we can look at something else. So you get those two um, bonuses as part of this already very, very discounted rate as well. So again, Crossroads of NLP coming up in October. It will happen with or without you. We'd love to have you. It is a highly, highly discounted rate this time, uh, to this time round. Monday, October 19th, we're going to get started at, uh, at the you know, top of the hour. We're going to give you all of the information that you need beforehand. Now is the time to make the decision and say, you're in. So right now in the chat box, type in, I'm in. Once you say, I'm in, we're going to send you a quick message, a quick email, um, and, and follow up with you. I'm going to do that with my team today. So all you need to do right now in the chat box, type, I'm in, we're going to get back with you and we're going to um, have a quick chat on what are the next steps, set up that uh, payment plan. If you need the payment plan, set up the rest of the plan. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them for you. Um, so, you know, don't be shy. Make sure that you have all of your questions answered. Uh, once you, you state that I'm in, we will get back with you because I, I should have your um, email address. If you are saying I'm in, why don't you go ahead right now and also in the chat box, put in your email address just so I can be certain that I have the correct email address. But you all went through Eventbrite and, and shared your email address there with you as well. Now, we take NLP and the NLP practice very, very strict and with a lot of fun and strategic as well. So we're only taking applications, right? We want to make sure that this information that, that we are giving you goes into the right hands. Why am I saying that? NLP is a tool. NLP is an incredible methodology and it can, if used wisely and ethically, it can do a lot of great good. And if put placed in the wrong hands, it can destroy. It's just like a hammer. You can build and you can destroy with a hammer. So I personally bet everyone each and every person that has ever gone and taken any of our courses, I personally vet them. And I have turned down applications. So I want to make sure that we're ethically passing on this information as we're giving you great, incredible uh, strategies for your success. So this is by application only. If you want to send us a quick email, if you have more questions, here's the email right here. This is our direct line, 423-303-8432. And um, I am leaving it at this. I am very excited and very grateful that um, we get to see you in October. John, any last comments? Just this is an incredible opportunity for you to increase your skill level in NLP. This is designed to take you from an elite level of practitioner. We've designed it just for that. And you got one taste of it today. Imagine 10 days of content like this. So if you're ready to take the next step, type in I'm in in the chat box and Brigitte will be in touch with you. So that's all I have. Brigitte, over to you and I'll let you uh, wind this thing down. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. This was incredible. Thank you for um, being here with us. We wanted to have it 45 minutes. It's 46 minutes past the hour. Again, info at NLP Atlanta. If you have any questions, when you have any questions, I'm looking forward to seeing you in October. Thank you and bye for now. Bye-bye.